Thank you, Gadi. Uh, uh, no need to rush out, guys. We are actually opening it uh, now for questions. So uh, please join us here. Sherwood, Ohad, Jody, Gadi, take your seat. <coughs> Jody. So, uh, anyone with a burning question? Uh, yes, please. Uh, last week, when you said that our crowd puts in 10%, is that the max to men or that's the number? It's the max, but it's, uh, it's a minimum of $50,000 or all 10%. So, uh, if the round is less than 500, we put 10% of that pepper all at once. Uh, we did, uh, do we have uh, a speaker for that? So I'm trying to make off one. How do you get regular? We are acting our, under the existing regulations, which means that uh, uh, all the investors that are on the site that have access to that information needs to go through accreditation process. The accreditations are different criteria depending on the country. Uh, in the US and the UK, it's roughly a million dollars of net uh, worth uh, or $200,000 or pounds, uh, depending on uh, uh, $200,000 income or 300000 combined income, That's uh, and then you are, and it's self-accreditation, uh, so you just need to say which of the terms, uh, in Israel it's insane by the way, in Israel you need to, uh, to do two out of three, okay, the third is impossible, uh, so the third is actually, in the last quarter you had to do 30 investment deals, okay, so let's strike that out, okay, uh, that's like every deal every three days, okay, so uh, so basically you need to do uh, two things. One is to show that you have experience in such deals and you know what you're doing. So that's kind of fluff. Or I mean, and the, th the first is you need to show that you have 13 million shekels is, uh, worth, uh, is net worth, not including real estate, okay? <laughs> it's less than 2%, okay? Uh, and in Israel, we actually need to confirm that you are indeed what you said on the side that you are. So uh, it, the burden is on us to actually confirm that. There are some discussions, but basically you need to accredit yourself on the site. In some cases, that's self-accreditation. In some countries, that's, uh, that's, we need to actually check that. How long does it take to uh, go through the selection process with your triangle? The triangle usually takes um, two to five weeks. The, that, uh, I mean, from the first meeting to the Two is uh, when, I mean, all the ducks are aligned, I mean, everything is aligned, uh, you know, uh, and, and we did deals actually quicker than that in some cases, uh, but we're saying usually two to five weeks. Uh, from the time that it's on the site, the term sheet would say that the round would close in 45 days, uh, that we have t uh, 45 days. We actually usually close that much faster than that, I mean, or about half the time, so about three weeks. Uh, to actually close the round. We had rounds, I mean, we closed the round to a company of 1.7, 1.68 million dollars in seven, eight days uh, from the time of launch. But, uh, but typically it takes a few weeks to, uh, to fund. We had an issue about a month ago that there was actually a delay from the time we signed the term sheet to the time it, uh, it was on the side because we had kind of a backlog on our side. We didn't schedule the deals right, so we had five deals waiting to actually be posted and there was some delay. We actually got that under control uh, uh, in the last few weeks. So the president signed into law on April 5th, 2012. The Congress gave the SEC 270 days to come up with the rules. That was December 31st of this past year. Um, we had a transition at the SEC. Uh, we've had three chair people now. Uh, we have the final one in, Mary Jo White. I met with her two weeks ago, had an hour-long conversation. It seems like they have all their questions answered. I take, um, uh, I, I believe, based on yesterday's issuance of the final rules for Title II, which allows for general solicitation for accredited investors, which I think is going to allow for platforms like our crowd to really take over in the United States. Um, it means that the proposed rules for um, 
essentially crowdfund investing for unaccredited investors will be coming shortly. Um, we do have a 180 day waiting period where we take feedback from the crowd um, and then they will take that into the final rules. So uh, unaccredited crowdfunding will be live probably the beginning of 2014. Cool. No, I will use my <laughs> privilege and ask Sherwood if I may. You mentioned the fact that you met with Israeli regulators. How did they respond to the idea of crowdfunding? So the good news is um, this morning we had uh, actually had some great meetings thanks to the coordination of the U.S. Embassy and, and a lot of people on the ground here. Um, met with uh, Professor uh, uh, Roverman at the Knesset who's pushing the legislation and also met with Professor Hauser at the ISA. Um, the meeting ended with um, crowdfunding will happen here in, uh, in Israel. Um, so that is good. Um, I do believe you all need to play a very important role in letting them know that the legislation that they have proposed um, it does not benefit the crowd. Um, it is very focused on tech. Um, quite frankly, the, the businesses that will benefit from this are Main Street businesses, mom and pop businesses, and not tech. In the United States, we tell people all the time, if you're a tech company, you've got access to capital. It's called Silicon Valley in New York City. Um, so the fact of the matter that they're trying to craft legislation for people that already qualify for capital, I don't, I think defeats the purpose of the intent of what we're trying to do. Um, I would encourage you to be vocal in that capacity and let them know that companies like mine, and I shared that with them, we flavored medicines, we were not a tech company, we're perfect candidates for this type of financing. So they also are putting restrictions on um, who's going to be able to choose what companies are the right ones to fund. And I think it's the office, uh, the chief scientist, chief, chief scientist. So there's one person that's going to say yes or no. And I quite frankly, I think that defeats the purpose of having a crowd as well, because you're supposed to be able to use the crowd wisdom. Um, so you need to be engaged in this process and let them know what you want. Uh, along the way, but uh, the good news is they see what is happening globally and uh, they're moving it forward here. Thank you. Yes, please. How uh, will the Job uh, Act restrict crowdfunding only to the states? Because it's for creation of jobs, right? So, so the, the, uh, in it, uh, the uh, investments need to be creating jobs in America. They need to, outside of America, uh, companies could not participate you can be, as long as you incorporate as a U.S. entity and you can pass a background check, you can put a pitch up on a crowdfunding platform in the United States. Um, so those are two hurdles, I think, that'll keep people from crowdfunding in the United States if they're not a U.S. essentially business person and entity. Um, but you're right, every country needs to have its own regulation and legislation surrounding this. I think crowdfunding 2.0, when we get this up and running and we can see that it's an efficient transparent marketplace. We can work on mechanisms to allow the transfer of funds between countries or allow entrepreneurs in other countries really to solicit funds without worrying about fraud. That's the biggest concern is how do we police the markets to make sure that the people from one country are real people and corporations if we can't actually see them. The whole principle about this is using your social network and your community to fund businesses. Those communities are usually in your backyard. Um, so if we're going across borders, not, not that there isn't a great opportunity with diaspora dollars, but I'm just saying initially in crowdfunding 1.0, if we're gonna get this up and running, we should probably be focused on the communities that surround us. Thank you. Yes, please. I'd like to ask uh, Joy. So first of all, Joy. all of the, um, all of these lectures were very uh, educated. So thank you. Um, Jody, Jody. Jody, I'm sorry. I'm gonna uh, approach this September companies such as our crowd, because I think that's the way to go for my product. It's more of a niche product like the software you presented, as opposed to the uh, iPad stand. Um, here's the thing, I know that I have to make my homework. I already applied for a provisional patent, and I'm gonna sign a company, and I have a mock-up and a presentation and everything. Mark research. I can make market research and that will cost me something like 5,000 euros and that will be like sealing the packages and set. But from what I heard, from what I hear, um, once I approach Gadi or any company like our firm, they are probably going to take the research which was very expensive that I made, look at it, give it a quick look, and then throw it to the trash and make their own research. So is it a waste of money making a market research? with, uh, you know, companies that cost about 5,000 euros? Yes. 
<laughs> yes. No, but you have to do it yourself. I would not pay someone to do that. You must do the market research yourself, and you have to do it. You have to do it. The, the data is available, and you must get it yourself from the, from the field. You do not pay someone to do your market research. They'll tell you what you want to hear. Uh, you, you must do it yourself, and it has to be ironclad. You know, from the field. I don't care if you have to call a thousand people and do a survey yourself, but don't pay somebody else. So Just what you're saying that they will complete my research if they actually want to take. They'll either believe you or they won't believe you. But as a business, as an entrepreneur, you have to do that research. I, I absolutely agree. I mean, that's. Uh, I mean, the the the. The largest turnoff that I can get from someone coming and pitching us is that if I think that he didn't his, do his homework and understood in what competitive landscape is, uh, you need to know. And that's also, in many cases, our fear when we look at the company. I mean, you present something new to us. I mean, we're not expert in this field. The the the, uh, the idea sounds great. I mean, you know, I'm. It's it's exciting. It's something unique. I never I never thought about that, but. That's not my space. Okay, the best, oh, the, the most focus in our due diligence is actually understanding who the other competitors are and what they're doing and why, why what you're doing is actually going to be better. I don't like the answer is there's no one out there. I mean, I think it's even on the list. Okay, that's never the case. Okay, there are definitely alternatives to what you're doing. That those are competitions. If you, even if someone is not building the same type of software to solve the, you know, if, if there's a problem, then there's other ways to solve that. You need to show when you come to us that you know the, 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 the playground that you're actually get into, getting into. Uh, and, and reading a market research, I mean, we'll in a minute know that, 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 that it's not your knowledge. Uh, it's, it's not a technology game, it's a marketing and, and, and a competition. Money they make by, I mean, uh, by how much that is going to be duplicated by. So, uh, I mean, basically what we're saying is that, you know, some of the companies will lose, some of the company, I mean, on some of the companies they will lose, and some of the companies they will win, and, uh, and you know, and, and, and researchers show that actually, if you are investing in early stage startups, that that's a risky business. Some of them will not survive, some of them will close, then you need to create a portfolio. So we're basically... But it doesn't matter. They make if the company. Uh, let's say that the, we invested in a company with a five million dollar valuation, and the company was sold uh, three years later for a hundred million. So, yes, it doesn't matter what percentage they made. But if they had ten thousand dollars, they made the same twenty x. If I did the numbers right, twenty x on that number. So of course, it's not that they. You know, I don't have a formula that says invest ten thousand dollars, and at the end you'll get as if you put one million in. But you get the twenty x, and just like anyone else. I mean, uh, unless I didn't understand the question. Okay, last question, please. I promise. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 You said 44%. How many get funded by Kickstarter, and how many are successful? Forty-four thousand projects. So most of the project gets uh, about uh, about what they ask for, uh, 20, 30 percent above that, but not this uh, 10 times or 20 times. This is very rare. Uh, no, because uh, serial entrepreneurs ask for more and get more, because they are just better at it. They, they, they know that they, they have this network and they, they, they have this uh, network reputation and they ask more, they get more, about twice as non-serial. Uh, non and you said that 4% are actually ready for money, but they don't believe it. Uh, 
No, no, no. I said that four percent of the project raised the money but didn't deliver. Yeah. I promised you to buy, to build this cool uh, tripod, and I didn't make it. I, I worked hard for it for a year, and it just didn't work. Okay, guys. Uh, that's about it.